Hey y'all, it's Sarah. As you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff sitting in front of me, so I'm going to be doing a little crafting today. Um, this is kind of a two-in-one on the fireworks. I wanted to show a really, really simple way to make some firework decor for those of you that um, may find yourself in a position like I have over the last few months where you really want to do a hands-on craft, but you can't get um, into anything really complicated. This is still a pretty cute one that you can do fairly easily, and it's certainly one I feel like could be done with kids. I'm going to actually show that version first, and then I'm going to show you the version that I'm making for myself because um, I've got one set. Now I want to make another set to kind of coordinate with it. So I want to dive into some of the goodies that you see sitting in front of me. What we're going to be working on are a set of fireworks. Um, these are a pretty good size too. I want to show you with the firework wicking um, all the way up to the wick. You're talking about 15 inches. So they're pretty large. I kind of wanted a matching set. So um, I want to do another set like this. But I want to show you another version really quickly. Let's run through these. So you can see just sitting here, I've got some kind of um, red, white, and blue washi tapes. Um, those are certainly fun and easy to use. Most of mine typically come from Dollar Tree. Um, you probably, if you've been crafting a while, you've probably got some of these in your stash. So I've got those out. I've got some ribbon. I've got rope for my wicking. This is just Dollar Tree um, roping. I've got some of the, um, I use this like raffia, but this is one of the Dollar Tree Luau skirts. Um, I'm going to be using bits and pieces off of one. You could get, this is the adult one, which certainly has a lot of material in there. Um, I think they sell a kid's size too. I've got some scrapbook paper. That's what I used for mine. Um, if any of you are scrapbookers, you probably kind of have an idea that this is an old pack. So I can't tell you um, where to find this particular one again. Um, I think this was one of the $5 ones that Michael's carried several years ago, but it was a nautical theme, so it gave me a lot of red, white, and blue options, um, and if you notice, they are not, um, they are a, a kind of a, a more vintage red, white, and blue tones. Um, they're in the kind of creamier looks, so I went with that, but I'm still going to show you how I aged that even further. Uh, these are the paints that I used. Um, I used Waverly Chalk Paint and Cashew, Waverly Chalk Paint and White, and then some of the Waverly Wax and Antique. Um, you could use any paint you wanted to this, a similar way um, in the same color schemes. I'm going to pull this over a little closer. I've got some of these. Um, these are like gift canisters. I know at Christmas time they carry much larger ones. Um, these are just kind of ones that they have year round. So I've got a couple. I went ahead and got them. Um, they, they're very metallic. I went ahead and got them in kind of the same color scheme to show you the really simple way to go. I'm going to dive right on into this. Oh. I almost forgot my little sparkly things. So these are um, these are weights for balloons. It's got a little loop at the top um, and a little metal stem and a concrete base. I have taken the little shiny parts off because I'm going to show you how to recycle those with this also. I did not even, you don't have to cut these. You can just bend this back and forth two or three times and this thing snaps right off really clean. When it snaps off, I used that spiral metal piece to make my holes in the tops of mine. And you can see I twisted it straight in so those holes didn't get really any bigger than they really had to be. So really quick, we're going to play a little switcheroo game. 
we're going to switch those out. Um, I'm going to take this one. So this is going to be my tallest one. I'm going to take this other color, pop it down on one of these. And then my shortest one is going upside down. And I got it wrong. I already got a hole in that one. And it's going to go... That way we have three different sizes. Um, so simple enough. Holes, very, very simple. This is the only one that I want to talk to you about. Um, the UPC code is actually imprinted in this. You could really go in and paint it. Um, you could take some coordinating paper and cut it in a little circle and, and pop it down on there. But I'm going to show you an even easier way. So I've got these little shiny cellophane type um, pieces that were on the bottom of the balloon weight. You can attach those right over that UPC. This is going to add to your kind of, um, I don't know what to call this part of this. Uh, on the other one, it's more like a wick, but for this one, it's kind of your explosion, um, your firework explosion coming out. So now you're just going to kind of boost the size of your explosion and hide that out with not doing much but gluing. We're still not even at a point where we've got to pull out any paint. We're just at gluing and putting things in place. Right here. I did not grab my water ribbon, but this is very simple to glue into there. Pop some ribbon over it and hide it. I grabbed the wrong one, obviously. You could do the same thing with washi tape. Um, take your washi tape and go over those seams if you don't like them. You could leave it open where you could actually um, open this canister and maybe put a surprise inside. Um, you can see where I'm reaching over here. This one's yellow inside. It was actually gold when it started, so it's yellow inside. But you could leave it where you can still pop the tops off. You can come in. I've torn a little washi tape off really quickly. And glue your lids on if you feel it necessary. Pop your washi tape on. And now you've got some decorations to that. Um, once you add your little pieces like this, there's a lid that I can pull off and show you. When you add your little explosion pieces, turn it over. Pop a little hot glue in there. Let it sit for a minute so that they stay really sturdy. Um, you know, I went pretty small with the hole to make sure that it wasn't noticeable. But you want to make sure it's a little more sturdy. So pop a little hot glue over that. And that pretty much is kind of all I wanted to show you. Because I'm actually going a little bit different route. But I did want to show you that version. Because now I understand that there are still times... Even when you're maybe not at your best, that you still want that um, creativity or that opportunity. And I wanted to show a way that you could still maybe get that vibe without having to do nearly as much of the work. Now I'm going to dive in a little further on mine. So I'm going to lay these things out the way that I intend on using them. I don't even really have to... Um, have them mismatched. I'm going to be painting over a pretty decent portion of mine. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to paint over a pretty decent portion of mine. So my first step, really quickly, I want to go ahead in and glue this down. I'm just going to look. It's got a seam right here. So I'm just going to try to make sure that I glue it to that seam. This is pretty straightforward. Once I go over it with the paper, this is going to hold up pretty well. And I have to pull it pretty close to me, guys, to get my arms to stay steady. So I don't feel like maybe you need to see all the gluing. But if you can kind of see, it's a little messy, but we're not really going to see any of this at all. I'm going to keep it laid down just for a moment while I pop that in there. That way... My tube is pretty even upwards and downwards. I'll pop it up and make sure it doesn't actually glue to my desktop. But when I applied it, that allowed me to kind of make sure that I didn't glue it down all cattywampus. 
And I've just got all those seams lined up. Not a big deal. We're going to cover those anyway. It's just a thing for me. So my next step is really, really easy. You don't even have to paint this whole thing. As a matter of fact, if you're gluing stuff down to it, I don't even recommend painting the entire thing. Um, you just want to paint um, these end points. I'm coming in with a Waverly Cashew. I love this color, by the way. I'm just going to go in, get my edges painted. I came down a little bit. And honestly, I wish that um, I would have exposed maybe a little more of the edges on the other ones um, and came down with my paper just maybe an eighth of an inch lower to see that rim a little better. However, my paper came up pretty close to the edge, but I still came down just a little bit to make sure. I went ahead and did tops and bottoms. I know it wasn't a big deal. I don't think anybody's going to pick mine up and flip them over. But for my own kind of satisfaction, I did top and bottom. And it may take you two coats, um, depending on what color you choose. Red is always one of the hardest colors to cover with anything and you're going to see that in another project that red is always I generally if I'm going to be painting something I generally try not to choose anything that would have a red base to it and if I do I paint it black first so I'm going to do this I'm going to put probably two coats on each end if you notice this end on mine is going to be open um, that was not a big deal to me you could always cut out a piece of cardstock and fill that in. It was not a big deal to me. The other ones are not like that. So same thing here. All of these, all three of my cylinders, I'm going to go ahead and get the ends painted and let both coats dry. And then we'll jump into the next step. As you can see, my little canisters have had a little bit of time to dry. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the next step, which I'm going to cover mine with scrapbook paper. Um, you could paint these if you wanted to, and I wanted to show you really quick. It, Like I said, it is embossed, but the cashew, even being a light color, covered that embossing quite a bit with the texture that comes from it. So you could probably get away with that, but I really need to be using this stash, so... That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to go ahead and start with my large one um, that's pieced together. You can see at this point, um, this thing is 11 inches long. And I am using 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. I have cut this one um, because it was, this is kind of what it was. Um... I'm going to use this and I'm just going to add to it. Ordinarily, I would personally use scrapbook adhesive for this. But for the sake of convenience, um, honestly, I'm just going to use hot glue. And I'm going to stay pretty simple with it. I'm going to lay it flush. I think I've got it pretty even. I'm kind of using this line right here to line it up with to make sure that I don't, um, that I don't get it going all crooked around my rim so i'm just gonna butt it up against there i'm gonna pop some hot glue right across there my lid is going to pretty much stay in place i'm gonna add a little more glue down through there um, but this is going to hold my lid pretty much stationary on there and i'm gonna pop this down we're going to spin it, and I don't even really have to cut down the 12 inch length. I just had to, um, well, since I'm using a scrap piece, I'm pretty set. It goes around it perfectly on these particular canisters. I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to throw my glue right up against this edge and roll it over. You do whatever is convenient. Um that'll let you get it laid down and i just kind of rolled it hopefully i don't glue it to my desktop 
there we go should be stuck down you kind of see so I've got all these scraps you can kind of see that I've kept my scraps with this pad so that's basically what I was using um, I went in and kind of found scraps that I could um, I could work out together so let's just see I'm gonna go ahead and set that one to the side and see what scraps are left off of this because I know I'm gonna need to add um, a little bit here so we'll see what scraps are left I've got um, this one and I think I'm gonna use this on my small canister because it was a pretty good fit it is a pretty good fit so same thing I'm gonna go ahead and put my base covering on all of these and then I'm gonna kind of embellish from there as you can see I've got um, kind of the base on all of my little canisters I'm gonna go ahead and start embellishing you can see I had some scraps left over from cutting these down so I'm just gonna add to them you could certainly go in and um, tape these off and paint your own stripes and that kind of thing uh, I'm using what I have so very simply I'm just gonna come in and about embellish a couple of these just by adding um, these scraps here at the top or bottom or in the middle or you could go half and half you could get as wild with this as you wanted to you could probably find printables um, with some patriotic emblems that you wanted to put on there um, any of that so I'm gonna go ahead and attach down um, a couple of these pieces I think um, I certainly need to go ahead and cover that area so I'm gonna just glue these down over the top of this and then we're gonna get into some fun distressing okay you can see I've got all my paper on here it's all dried and stuck down good I'm gonna determine which are my tops so um, all of mine go this direction I'm going to come in and start with some of my Waverly White chalk paint. And you could certainly use your cashew to do this. Um, and that would be fine. It would give even more of a vintage kind of vibe. But I'm going to go ahead and use the white. I have got this brush, this Dollar Tree chippy brush. And I continue to let it dry out. The bristles get hard they get too hard and too stiff I come in with one of the Dollar Tree wire brushes and brush some of that out but I keep this thing pretty stiff and rough um, this particular one I only use for dry brushing white paint on and so these bristles are a few are stuck together some I just broke loose I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna get a little bit of this in my lid I do not need much at all Oops, and I have made a mess. Let's tap that off there. So I'm just dipping those bristles in. I'm going to tap most of that off. I'm going to come in. And for this particular one, I went both directions. You could always just go one direction around. You can take this as light or as heavy as you want to. If you can see that. So I've got some pretty heavy striations there due to the condition of this brush. That's what I'm shooting for. It really pops up on just that blue. Ooh, I got a little too much paint on there. If you're a little anxious about doing this, start on the back where your seam is where you're not going to notice it um, anyway. That way, if you feel like you're a little heavy-handed or you get it a little wonky whoop, on the first try. I'm sorry, guys. My hands just let go of things, especially um, the left is where the most of the damage is. So now you notice that I'm coming in and I'm going the other direction, too. Can you see that? We've almost got like a cross hatch of aging going on here. So I feel like that one's pretty good. I'm going to move to this next one doing the very same thing. No matter what direction my paper is going, I'm going to do this back and forth. Of course, there's my signature. I've got my little fingerprint on there. Don't be afraid if you've gotten it heavy in a spot. Leave it. Work with it. So... I'm going to come back in. 
And I'm doing my other direction. I don't necessarily suggest going like on the diagonal, but if that's a look that you like, you could totally try it. I just loved what this did to this paper. Um, it, it really kind of um, aged it up quite a bit. Even though the colors were kind of a vintage look, the, the pattern in the print was still very crisp. So this is toning down that kind of crispness. Super simple. I'm going to go back up and get this crosshatch pattern in there with the up and down. See, I've gotten a little heavy there. Leaving it. Totally leaving it. One thing I want to say, I want to point out is... Um, the, one of the things that I made sure to do is on paper that's striped, I tried to make sure that my striping lined up, um, where I wanted it to hit the edges. I, I didn't want it to hit weirdly in between a stripe. So I did do that. Now you can see how that changes those. Let me kind of show you. And then the next step is going to be, we're going to take, this is just one of the Dollar Tree regular old kitchen sponges that come in a six pack i'm going to take this dipping it in some of this waverly wax and antique i do not want it that heavy at all we're going to try to feather this on there so i'm patting a lot of that off okay if you notice i accidentally chipped my paint i'm not real worried about it it adds to the look so I'm going to take it and I'm flicking it um, straight across there, kind of keeping it perpendicular. Now I'm coming down this direction, still kind of keeping it perpendicular with this direction now. Can you see those edges kind of aging up? I'm not doing the whole thing. Um, you certainly could if you had really bright paper. And you wanted to tone it down some. Doing the bottom edge. Similarly. You can come up. Make some kind of. Um, kind of grungy looking marks up there. So I did mine well enough that. I tapped some on the edges. The edges started to look really aged. And I think that's um, a pretty cohesive transition to match to my other ones. So I'm basically going to do that very same thing to every single one of these and age up that, um, that top some, that bottom some. And then we're going to add our wicks. You can see all my pieces are a little kind of vintaged up now. They've got some of that distressing on them. I can jump on into um, doing my wick. And I'm going to grab just some um, tape here. I'm coming in with my Dollar Tree rope. I found this the easiest. If you have a different way to do this, you can certainly do that direction. But I'm going to just go in and make basically like an aglet. Um, you know, like on your shoelace, I'm going to do that. And if you notice, I did not take my tape all the way to the end of there. There's almost like a tube. Um, I cut about three or four inches off. And I'm going to do that three times. This little tube part just um, it offered a good adhesion point since this rope is, uh, thin, but it also gave like a base of stiffness to this so that my wicks would stand up a little better and not, um, 
flop over quite as much. Depending on how long you cut them, they can be a little floppy there. My wicks are all cut. I'm going to show you really quick why I made this little um, tube part to do that. It just gave me a good little channel to pump some glue into it and give me a pretty decent adhesion point without um, without this thing spreading out so much. So I'm going to pop it on there. I'm going to reach down there and kind of squeeze some of that glue that I pushed up in that little tube down. And we're not even going to see our little artificial aglet kind of piece there because we're going to cover that um, with the the raffia explosion part so every one of these if you notice i'm using the same canisters with the holes but we don't actually need the holes you could probably just pop this down in the in a hole if you wanted it to actually go through it and i just found that handy to be able to channel that glue into there and then kind of squeeze it down Whoops. Hold it in place a little longer than I did though, guys. Then I was able to just squeeze it down and, and really get full adhesion on there. All my wicks are in place. I'm here with my hula skirt. If you come up here to kind of the waistband of it, you can slide these off in their full length and just kind of pull as many as you're going to need, depending on how full um, I'm so tempted to actually put that on. Depending on how full you want your kind of explosion to be, grab a couple strands and straighten them out. They're pretty easy to straighten out. The knots they use um, are not terribly complicated. So I'm going to take just a few of these. Pull them loose. There we go. I think I've got them. I'm going to start wrapping these kind of around the width of my hand. So this one's pretty good. I'm about halfway through. I don't even really have to cut these, guys. You could totally pull these apart. I, don't, I can't cut with my left hand, so we're going to see how this works out. Oh, left-handed people. I feel your pain now. Just had to switch that. I understand the struggle for a brief moment there. That was not um, that was not easy. So I have made this kind of lasso looking loop. I'm gonna swing around here and basically flip back under, create a knot, and I'm using that knot as my adhesion point for this. So this is gonna give me like a little spot to glue this down from you guys can see that's kind of what i did you could do lots of these individually um, i'm just going to come in with my scissors cut my little loops see how high that is i'm going to trim this down just a hair somehow my tape got stuck in there Pull that off. So now you see that little knot gives me a pretty decent um, spot to adhere to. I'm pop a little glue on there. I did about two or three of these per wick. I think I did three. And kind of placed them in a triangle type position. And went around just the whole base of that. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm making that little, whoops. Maybe I'm making it. So I'm just kind of swooping it around, making myself a knot, pulling these pieces back through. Then I'm, I'm not really having to cut a whole lot off of here. I think I just jinxed that one, but there we go. There's my, well, I just lied to you. However, I'm going to adhere a couple more of these. And those are all kinds of, I pulled those all kinds of funny, but I kind of like 
a few crazy ones in there. So we'll attach it this way. You can kind of see where that's going. And I want to show you the next thing that I did personally. So I got to this point and I realized that, I don't know, when I see fireworks, I need sparkles. So I wanted to put some sparkle here. One of the things I did was I took just some yellow glitter glue. Um, this particular brand is Stickles, but Dollar Tree has these really nice size bottles of glitter glue. I just happened to go with this one because it had this yellow tint to it. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see super well. I just kind of blobbed some right on the tip of my little rose wick, but I'm going to recommend doing that very last or on my rope wick. Excuse me. So I came in and I get messy with my crafting guys. If, if you have a neater way to do this, definitely go with the neater direction. But I came in, put some glitter glue all on here i use this you could use stick glue whatever to get your other glitter to adhere or any kind of glitter to adhere um but i came in bunch those together got them kind of already a little glittery you can come down as far as you want to and then i came in this is my glitter stash so um I'm actually, I think I'm going to use this one, but you could go, um, totally go as wild as you want to with this. You could even kind of go with the red, white, and blue themes. I'm going to go with this, um, holographic gold version. I liked the way it sparkled and I'm going to sprinkle it on those and it's going to stick everywhere that glue is. Can you all see? So now I've got, it's not too over the top. I like it with that more natural element to add just that little kick of um, almost a little bit of glam to this more natural material. So I'm going to get it a little more glittery there. And I know in the camera it probably likely does not show super, super well. But it is pretty to have that little bit of sparkle um, against these more um, vintage kind of appearance. It's a nice little fun, um, I guess, opposition to this vintage look to have that, that glam kind of sparkle to it. So I'm just going to tap this down into the glitter I already have down here. It was a bit of a mess. Um, I'm still probably sparkly in places from the first set. You can see that little detail. I'm going to slide this out of the way before I make it go flying. I'm taking my glitter glue now. And I am going to kind of hold this rope and squish a nice little blob on the tip of that rope. The other cool thing about it is that you don't necessarily have to worry about your rope fraying out. Can you guys see? This is going to dry on the more clear yellow side and just give kind of that lit up little sparkle you could wrap some of the um the fairy lights around these i think would be pretty fun um, and work really well with this i have not obviously gotten the explosion part of my wicks on these other pieces um, but i did want to tell you that i went ahead where my seams were on the back side that is where i chose to run my glue to attach mine together to make it one solid piece i didn't necessarily have to do that i had every intention of coming around with some twine and tying it in front of this and then once i did i decided and i can still show you I have that piece. I even tried to add one of these cute little Dollar Tree stars. Um, and I had attached that to the front. It still was really cute. It was it was more on the super cutesy side to me. So I really, I just cut it loose. I even had um, this cute little tag with it. You can kind of see. I had this whole little thing going here. I decided that I preferred it this way. But you've got a million options. Um, now I've got 
a full working set that I can do on either side of my fireplace. With these being almost 15 inches tall, by the time it's all said and done, you've got all your little fluffy bits. Um, that's a pretty good size, I think. And I have a really large scale fireplace and mantle. So hopefully this will give me something that doesn't just vanish um, and just look... Uh, my big problem is that most decor pieces look very small and stunted on my fireplace. And ultimately, when I try to use smaller pieces, it just starts to look like clutter. So I'm hoping that these are large enough to really um, make a little bit of an impact. Um, they are bigger than maybe your standard candles. So I really liked how they turned out. Um, I hope it gave you maybe an idea or two. And I'm going to finish playing in this glitter so that I can be fabulous all day long. Um, and I'm actually going to show you an accessory that I'm going to make with this when I'm finished with this project. So um, I hope to talk to you soon. If you haven't, go ahead and jump over to the Peppermint Cactus Facebook group. Check out what's going on over there. Um, there's lots of great support and inspiration, and I hope to get a chance to hang out, talk, babble, and do a little crafting with you.